A new tonight, a Johnson High School student violently attacks a classmate. The district returns the attacker to the campus months later. And now that very same teen is accused of beating an assistant principal. Tonight, one mother tells our Dylan Collier how the flaw in discipline system at Texas schools is putting your kids at risk. Yeah, and we want to give you a warning. This footage in the story is not suitable for all viewers. <laughs> This surveillance camera video on the campus of Johnson High School last October shows a sudden surge of violence. After a teen's shorts are pulled down, he turns and begins striking one of the first classmates he sees, delivering blow after blow to the child's head, followed by a stomp to his skull. And then finally, multiple kicks to the injured boy before walking away like nothing happened. Lisa Piott that day got a call from her older son, attempting to explain why his younger brother was headed to the hospital. Mom, you got to call the school. There's blood everywhere. The victim's injuries included a concussion, a broken nose, and bruising and swelling of his eyeball. Piott learned her son's attacker had been in two previous fights, making this his third incident of violence within the first nine weeks of school. And although he was arrested for assault and booked into the county's juvenile detention center, he was soon out. And within days of the attack, these images posted on social media show him mocking his victim. Were you under the assumption as far as school goes that he was done, that he was no longer going to be allowed on campus and would be expelled? Yes, absolutely. The process is broken where where these repeat offenders are just allowed to be returned to the environment. Case in point, her son's attacker, who was sent to an alternative campus, then returned to Johnson in January, only to be arrested again, this time for felony assault on a public servant. Northeast ISD police say he repeatedly hit an assistant principal with a closed fist April 14th causing him to bleed from the head and face. A juvenile court hearing last week revealed the teen is now back in alternative school, but he could come back to Johnson. But banning the teen from the district is simply not an option. State law and even the U.S. Constitution guarantees every citizen the right to a free public education. The law states that we cannot exclude a student permanently. Any ISD Executive Director of Communications, Aubrey Chancellor, says at the end of the day, the district's hands are tied. We certainly understand that there is concern, that there is fear for those families, maybe some staff members. Small consolation for Piot, who says the beating has lingered long after her son's physical wounds healed. But my child is entitled to an education too that's safe and free of intimidation and bullying. For the defenders, Dylan Collier, KSAT 12 News. The arrested teenager is free on bond and scheduled to be back in court in late May. The typical punishment for any ISD students who assault a staff member is 75 days at an alternative school before they're returned to their home campus.